So God says to you, God the Father says to you, I want you to take your son and I want you to offer him up, put him on a tablet or table and kill him. Prove your love to me. What do you say to that? You've been waiting your whole life to have a child. You're an old man. You finally get to have a kid. God gives you a kid. Now he asks you to sacrifice him as an expression of your love and faith for God. <laughs> Number 143 of the Catechism. By faith, man completely submits his intellect and his will to God. With his whole being, man gives his assent to God, the Revealer. Sacred Scripture calls this human response to God, the author of Revelation, the obedience of faith. 145. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out into a place which he was to receive an inheritance, and he went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith he lived as a stranger and pilgrim in the promised land. By faith Sarah was given to conceive the son of the promise. And by faith Abraham offered his only son in sacrifice. So, earlier in the video, I did a monologue on Abraham. Back in the Old Testament, God asked Abraham to sacrifice his only son. The son that he was waiting for his whole life. His wife was barren. And then finally one day she gave birth to Isaac. And God then says to him, I want you to sacrifice Isaac to me. And Abraham didn't question it. He's like, okay. And they went up into the woods. They made an altar. They were collecting sticks and brush, whatever it was, to make the fire. Um, even at one point, Isaac was just like, you know, where's the, um, where's the offering? And Abraham says, God will provide all along, Abraham knows he's going to sacrifice his son or hoping that he doesn't have to. The good news is God jumps in and stops him. He says, stop, do not lay a hand on that boy. And he stops him. He was testing his faith to see what kind of a person he was. And because of that, Abraham is the father of all faith. They took, they went over and they took the goat that was in the thicket. They brought it over and they offered it up as a holocaust. And thank God for that. But that's the kind of faith that we're talking about. And it's not just faith in man, it's faith in God. It's trust in God. Now in the Old Testament, everything, as I told you in the last video, is a typology. You know, everything that happened there, is when we get into the New Testament, it's a fulfillment. Or we kind of see things that resemble what's going on in the New Testament. Number 146. Abraham thus fulfills the definition of faith in Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Because he was strong in his faith, Abraham became the father of all who believe. Now in the New Testament, we find that the mother of Jesus, Mary, is the perfect model of faith. I mean, think about it. The fiat. When the angel Gabriel comes to Mary and says, you're going to have a son and he's going to be holy and he's going to be God and Mary says behold I am the handmaid of the Lord let it be done to me according to your word she doesn't doubt she doesn't ask she just goes let it be done according to your word that is faith so she's the perfect model of faith and since we're on the topic of Mary I know we're talking about faith but I just want to put this out there you need to kind of contemplate the fact that Jesus was born of a woman. God, the Father, chose the perfect woman at the perfect time to have his son be born through the perfect tabernacle. And he knew that she would have perfect faith. Just something to think about. We don't call her perfect, but she's pretty close, pretty close to it. Uh, we'll save that topic for another day. But the faith that she had was just, boom, whatever you say, and so be it, and that's that. So, as we continue with faith and through this journey through the Catechism, if you go into the Catechism and you start studying the section on faith, you'll see there are all different ways that we can respond to faith. The bottom line is faith is a response to God. It's the best way to please God. It's stepping out and being obedient to God through faith. 
And faith comes first. Reason comes second. And they don't contradict each other. It's just that you can't reason faith. But through faith, you can find reason. So make sure you pick up your catechism. Study what we're talking about today. Like I said, these are brief little videos. Hopefully, they'll prompt you to pick up your catechism and learn more about what the church teaches. 148. The Virgin Mary most perfectly embodies the obedience of faith. By faith, Mary welcomes the tidings and promise brought by the angel Gabriel, believing that with God nothing will be impossible. And so giving her assent, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, let it be done to me according to your word. Throughout her life and until her last ordeal, when Jesus, her son, died on the cross, Mary's faith never wavered. She never ceased to believe in the fulfillment of God's word, and so the church venerates in Mary the purest realization of faith. So it would be great to have faith, like Mary and Abraham, uh, but faith is a gift, and we have to ask for it. So Jesus tells us throughout Scripture, Ask, and you shall receive. Knock, and the door will be opened. Seek, and you will find. So one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is faith. You can't just acquire faith. You have to pray for it. It's a gift. So, you know, you probably know people who you get frustrated with because it's like, why won't they just see? Why can't they just have faith? And it's not something that you can just find. You have to pray for it. It's a gift. And not only is it a gift that you acquire, but you can lose it. It also says in Scripture, if you don't practice your faith, you can make a shipwreck of it. You can lose it in the end. So you got to constantly work at it. You know, faith is not something that's easy. And like I said, the reason part comes once you have faith. Once you open your heart and you let go and you let God in, say, I believe or I trust or show me, he'll show you. And then the reason comes. So faith is a big deal. It's a big virtue. Perseverance in faith, number 162. Faith is an entirely free gift that God makes to man. We can lose this priceless gift if St. Paul indicated to St. Timothy, wage the good warfare holding faith and good conscience. By rejecting conscience, certain persons have made a shipwreck of their faith. To live, grow, and persevere in the faith until the end, we must nourish it with the word of God. We must beg the Lord to increase our faith. It must be working through charity, abounding in hope, and rooted in the faith of the church. 2 Corinthians 5.7 We walk by faith, not by sight. 